So, Mikel, you've had a great season up until now uh, with Arsenal, top of the table. But I just wanted to go back to where the coaching idea came from. And were you always destined to be a coach or a manager? Because it's not something no. I maybe recognise, maybe playing against you. I, mm. I didn't know you, mm. but you know you were quiet on the pitch, a quality player. Where, where did that bug come from? I was 26, 27, and um, I started to have that necessity to understand the game better. Obviously. As a player, my my biggest vulnerability was that sometimes I was jumping into that pit and I didn't exactly know what was going to happen. You know, it was too unpredictable and uh, I wanted to have the feeling that I could have more certainty going into the games. And uh, and I decided at 28 to start to do my coaching badges. Um, I started to do when I was at Arsenal. Arsenal was very supportive with it. Um, I started to really enjoy that process and, and I took it step by step when I was 30, I remember that Pep made the first call to say, I might be coming to England, would you become my assistant? I said, I'm still playing, you know, it's, it's still too early. But that gave me, I think, another um, motivation to, to understand that whenever I decided to stop playing, um, I wanted to start a coaching. You, you mentioned Pep getting in touch with you. What was, what was the relationship like at them? Was that something going back to Barcelona's yeah. academy? We, we met when, when I was 15 years old. Obviously, he was my idol. Um, he was the one to, to try to emulate uh, if I wanted to be a first-team player at Barcelona. And uh, we built that relationship from there. And then it was weird because when I was still playing and he was a Barcelona manager and Bayern Munich manager, he used to call me to ask me about English teams and how would you play against that. And, and we built that relationship and, and one day he was very clear to me, the day that I'm in England, I, went, um, I have a dream is to do what I did in Barcelona in this league when everybody says that it's impossible to do. And uh, I would like your help and support and your experience uh, to help me to achieve that dream. So that was it. When you were a player, you talked about when you got to sort of your mid to late twenties. You were thinking about coaching. You were in an Everton team that obviously I played against, and you know Everton as well as me. It, it, sometimes it's get the ball forward, mm. get the crowd involved. And when you, you're thinking about coaching and managing yourself, how are them conversations maybe with the manager at this? Mm. You know, when you get more experience, you try and put maybe your input as a senior player on how you think your team should play. Well, I think as a player, I think you have to respect um, the vision and the idea of the manager has. And uh, I think after as well, you have to have certain room as a player to try to give the manager your opinion or where do you think that you can affect the game more or be more productive for your team. And I had coaches in my career, they're really good at um, convincing me to do cert certain things, but as well very open to listen what the team uh, needed. For example, with David, uh, when I was at Everton, he asked me two things I never did in my life. But I think that made me a better player. Um, I think it's a word that is adaptability. And as a player, as a Maya, you need to have that capacity to adapt. I played in different countries where I didn't know the language, I have to adapt quickly, play in different positions. And as a manager, you have those challenges because you can have an idea. But the reality is that the ones that are the only protagonists in this industry are the players. And you have to give them the tools and you have to put them in situations where you can maximize the resources that you have. And sometimes it's not your ideal situation, but it's the best for the team in that moment. When you're playing career finishes, there was talk of you think you joining the, maybe the Arsenal Academy, mm. and then obviously you go to Manchester City. Was that a tough decision? It was a tough decision, yeah, uh, because I was really attached to Arsenal, and um, I could see, you know, that um, there was a role there that I could fulfil and it could be really helpful. But again, going back to the story that he was building many years before with Pep, uh, I thought that was the right step for me. Uh, I want to experience that. I had my fears because I said, listen, I haven't coached anybody, so how am I going to go to the best coaching staff in the world and give something back that you're expecting me to do? But Pep was so convinced about it um, that I made the decision to, to go there. How was that then? Because you're talking about joining the best coaching staff in the world, but you're also coaching some of the best players in the world. Mm. You've never coached before. How, mm. how was that for you, actually, that first time on the grass, speaking to some of, <laughs> as I said, the best players in the world? 
I think I was able to do it because Pep was so supportive, uh, so open, and he gave me so much license right from the beginning that he made my job easier. At the beginning, just listen a lot and talk very little, you know, and you have to get in the dynamic of the coaching staff, what the manager really wants to understand, because something is the idea and, and another thing is the daily basics uh, and the processes in place to deliver what a manager wants. And then with the players, it was easy, you know, they were a great group of players, they welcomed me so much and um, I think then, I think it's about building that trust, that what you are telling them, what you are trying to do with them, that it makes sense for them, that they feel that they're becoming better and slowly build those relationships and, and at the end support the manager and uh, challenge him to, to be able to be better. That's what assistant coach should do. In the past, certainly in England, the manager was the manager. He, he didn't really coach too much. I think that's changed a lot now, certainly with managers I had, certainly foreign managers as well. So if you come into an environment where you know, Pep's on the pitch and he is coaching, what, what type of things would he give to you to do? What, what would your role be within that coaching setup? Well, at the beginning, a lot, because we, we had to change a lot of the departments. We had to understand the culture of English football, um, how referees act, uh, how the media works. There was a lot of things. That obviously, Pep was very interested, and I spent 14, 15 years of my life in, in this country. So he was very interested on in that. So first of all, giving support and understanding the context. Um, some of the things that we we're going to go against it straight away because it's against the culture of English football and it's going to take a while to break that wall. Uh, but when you have a person that is so determined, is so clear, so focused and, uh, and has so strong beliefs, you just die for him. And, uh, and it took a while, you know, the first year it wasn't easy. Um, but I think the process that we put in place and the roles that we had and the clarity that we have around the coaching staff, it was helping. At the beginning, it was more about okay, setting the training session, being supporting the training session, doing a lot of individual things with the, with the players. And then it was about preparing game plans, making decisions um, during matches and, and looking the picture ahead as well. How are we going to evolve this squad to be the best in, in this league? And, and it was great to be part of that. Is the media, maybe people in our position as well on TV, if they're critical of maybe a manager or, or a certain style of play, is the worry that that could then affect the players? When you talk about breaking through, is, you, is that what you're worried about? No, maybe no more the players. I think the players were so convinced and when the best manager in the world jumps in your dressing room, uh, you are say, OK, I'm going to do whatever you tell me because you've been so successful. I'm talking about uh, probably the, cold, the football culture that the crowd had in the country. You know, when you have to use the keeper three times to play backwards to create certain overloads, or certain spaces that you want to exploit. People went, why is he passing the ball backwards? Why backwards? Went? And that took a while. And sometimes it was that room room in the stadium in the beginning, <laughs> especially when they were going well. And now they are so used to it. You go to the, to the Etihad and, and they know. They get it, they know what expecting, they understand what is happening and everything clicks. But uh, that took a while. You obviously learn a lot from you know, the best manager in the world, but how long into the job are you thinking, I want to be a manager myself. I was clear uh, when I started the coaching uh, badges that one day I would, I would like to be a manager. The question is when. And, uh, and I don't think that you ever feel prepared to make that step. And certainly not to make the step that I did and, and take uh, a club like, like Arsenal. But um, you are jumping into the swimming pool with all the sharks are there. And uh, I was, and I'm still very young and you have everything to prove for. And, uh, and that's what you have to do. It's a great opportunity, as, as you said, Pep said, but did the size of the club be in your first job worry you? It is a worry, and uh, as well the timing of it. You are in the middle of the season, you know. Um, the club was in a really difficult place. The atmosphere around the whole place was, was difficult, and, um, and I never done it in my life, you know. And, uh, and then you see the people sitting around you, the owners, uh, Edu in that case, Vina was involved. Um, so convinced about you are the right person. I said, OK, I might, I might have to believe that, that I am. And, uh, and then I think you have to stay day by day. First of all, trying to convince the people around um, every department, getting to understand the players, getting them to understand what you wanted to do. And, and it takes a while to build that, that relationship. How important was the FA Cup win 
in terms of young manager, yeah. trophy straight away and almost giving belief to supporters and the club that you are the right man for the job? It was and it was after, well, or during Covid basically, because after two years, uh, two months in the job, um, Covid hit and we had to stop everything. So to generate any connection and cohesion and um, an atmosphere around the place, it was extremely difficult. But winning trophies, I think, it gathers everybody together, it, it sets some belief. We win some time, I think, uh, because of that win as well. And it was a unique moment to, as a manager to win something and, and something to the club after that many years I, as well. Um, it was great. In certain games, you're a little bit more pragmatic, certainly mm -hmm. come up against the, the better sides, maybe like Liverpool, I think Manchester City mm -hmm. in the semi-final, Chelsea in the final, where you'd almost use Obama Yang as a counter-attack. Mm -hmm. And I like that, that even though it wasn't maybe your first idea. You mm. adapted to the situation you, you found yourselves in. Can, can you explain that? Because if it's not yeah. your like, idea, how, how you get players to buy Good into question. it and you do it yourself? Probably it's... Uh, when we talked about the past and the experiences that I had as a player, as a manager, and, and having the capacity to adapt. And I could feel that with certain players playing in certain position, the way I wanted to play, it wasn't going to work out. And uh, arriving to those stages, it was about after lifting the cup and winning it. So I had to be more pragmatic. And uh, where can we be more protective and where can we take advantages? And uh, I made those decisions. We made those decisions as a coaching staff to try to get the players in, in areas that um, they could be at their best. And being them at their best, we were closer uh, to the opponents that we have to face. We were the, the, first, the best three opponents in this league. And, um, and I think that's the reason we, we managed to win. The following season on the back of an FA Cup win probably didn't go as well as, as you wanted. That was the, the season that a lot of people were questioning you, looking at you, talking about your job. How difficult was that as a young manager? Very difficult. It's something new that comes um, across. Again, it's all through Covid period. A lot of issues that we had. We have some issues with individual players. We have external issues. Uh, it was a season with, with a lot of questions around everything, but I always felt support from the ownership, from Edu, from everybody, and, um, and I knew and I was convinced what I was doing, and at some stage it was, going to, it was going to come out. I was clear as well where, in my opinion, the squad and the club was, and what was realistic and what we could aim for, and um, it wasn't with the expectations that we have to have as an Arsenal football club. What was the biggest thing you learned that season? A lot. Um, first of all, about the difficulty of the job, um, about the importance of surrounding yourself with, with the right people, with the right professionals, but with the right human beings. And then the third one about sticking to what you believe and what your guts tell you. Because if you start to listen too much about what you should be doing, what you're not doing right, it ends up affecting what you are trying to do. And uh, I think when you are in those moments keep driving and, and keep doing what you believe in. How, how tough is that to do when you're not an experienced manager, you've not mm. been there before? Is that people in the game? Is it speaking to Pep? Is it, you know, your own coaching staff? Who keeps you going and believing that right path is right the most, when the results yeah, are not going well? The most important ones, it's uh, my wife, my family, because that's when you really open up and, 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 and open your feelings and tell exactly the way you are feeling. Then the coaching and the staff around you, I think they are critical that uh, you can really sense what is happening, how they are feeling, how they can help you. And, uh, and the third one is to have a club behind you that is, is understanding what the situation is and what it's going to take to move from when we are here to there. But uh, the good thing is that I had a really clear plan. I put a plan of five different phases for the club, where we are comparing to the rest of the team. The timeline, and everything that we have to hit in every phase. And so are you ahead or behind? Uh, we are ahead. <laughs> I think the biggest thing that impresses me about the job that you've done is not just on the pitch. It feels like you've rejuvenated the club. It feels like there's a real togetherness from the supporters, the atmosphere at the stadium as well. Is, is that something that you're most proud of? It feels like it's one, it's all as one now. Yeah, so when we talk about success and is lifting a cup for me personally, <clears throat> And everybody that is involved is about what we generated, as you mentioned, around the club. It's uh, when I left the club and I was uh, somewhere else and I was looking back, all the comments, the energy, when I went to the stadium and feel that it really touches my, 
my tummy and I said, if one day I have the chance to, this is the first thing that I would like to change. That people are proud, that people are passionate, that people want to fight and have the back of the club, it doesn't matter what. And uh, it was too depressive and it was too critical, it was too much hunger there that uh, it was never going to work out. And uh, changing that culture, that environment and, and bringing light to the club is just beautiful because I can see the people coming to watch us and the people working for the club that they really enjoying it. And I think that has transmitted to the players in a really powerful way and uh, hopefully we can carry on. Around this time, you had a big decision to make as a young manager in terms of how you dealt with your best player or certainly most expensive player in Obama Yang. And me from the outside, not being an Arsenal supporter, I really admired the fact that you took a big decision. I didn't know if it was going to work or not, mm. but you took a decision. How much do you think that decision has, has helped with the football club are right now? Yeah, well, first of all, I didn't take that decision. We took that decision as a, as a club. Obviously, that is my recommendation and what I feel that if we want to get, we want to get what we need to do that. But I wouldn't like to single point in one player. I think it was with, with several players. Um, it was part of the strategy, part of what we are trying to build. And, and at the end of the day, when, when you are in that process and you want to go faster, there are people that are holding that boat and putting weight on it. And I'm sorry, but we're going to go even faster and there's not time or space for anybody. It's a player, is a staff member, is somebody that is damaging the club. And we made that decision. You then bought a lot of young players who came mm. into the club who were questioned by, by mm. maybe people from outside. Are they good enough for Arsenal? When obviously you were looking to the future as well. Mm. I mean, do you feel, looking back now, that was, that was a really brave decision to bring so many young players in at mm -hmm. once? In our opinion, it had to be done like this. And it had its risk, but we were in a position to go and recruit uh, players that they already proven everything and, and we can turn the team around the way we want it. So um, we believe that if they have, first of all, the right personalities, if they had the physical and the robustness to compete in this league and the intelligence and the talent to do it, it was about developing. And me personally, I love developing talent and, uh, and inspiring those, those players and, uh, and so far I think it's worked pretty well. Well a lot of those players who came in didn't just have your eyes on them, they had uh, the documentary eyes on them, the cameras. I mean, how, how was that? How, how did you find out? So I was in a board meeting and, uh, and we were touching a few points. Margonella was there with us and uh, I was just asked the question he say, OK, we almost... Uh, Asked or told? <laughs> we are almost signed with Amazon. What do you think? And I said, is that a question or, or is it just a communication? I said, no, we are doing it. It's OK. So then it's about how we're going to do it. And uh, I think the club made that decision. And looking at it now probably was the, the right decision. But obviously, it's, it is difficult. It's stressful. It's, uh, it's something that takes you out of your comfort zone. You feel constantly watched and, uh, and it's an experience, but I think it's made us all better. Well, I watched it and I, I, I really enjoyed it. I, I was impressed by it, but obviously at the end of the season, you didn't get exactly what you want and you see the scenes it, you know, in the dressing room, certainly I think away at, at Newcastle. And we did that game on, that was a Monday night football mm. game and we were, we were critical of, of the performance after the game and we, we felt looking sort of almost towards this season, it'd be quite difficult for you. I mean, how much of a blow was it to miss out on the, the top four, mm. but also the revenue that comes with that and thinking as a manager, how you can improve the team and, and take a next step next season? We fell short. Um, we didn't decide to get anything out of that game and we missed a big opportunity. But um, I think after all, I, when I look back at the season, where we were, compare ourselves, with all the teams and what they had and, and what we did. Uh, it gave me a lot of encouragement to, to believe that if we did well in the transfer window, the following season was going to be even better.